during the whole controversy you were having and it felt a lot like personal stuff was going on the internet, a specific YouTuber said that they asked you and they asked the lady in your life a question about you guys being intimate and you both mm -hmm. decided not to tell her the truth. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, no judgment, why did you guys have to lie and why couldn't you have said like none of your business, ho, why are you asking me? Because it's kind of inappropriate to uh, be asked. How are you? You've had a very interesting uh, few weeks or two weeks or whatever it's been. I, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, been busy, but yeah. Yeah. Appreciated <laughs> your, your coverage of things. Yeah. Listen, this space, this space is such a unique collaboration of people. Um, and I guess the reason I wanted to talk to you was not not about your stuff though i mean if you want to talk about it we can but mostly about um i guess like i wanted to talk to you about boys in the space and men in the space and specifically when men say we should help men do they mean men like vosh shit i don't know uh what so i guess we should probably start off cuz i haven't seen your like takes on vosh or yeah. i and I haven't seen, I watched his last video going over things. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen Ethan's most recent, like, uh, response to that. Um, but what, what are, like, what, how did you feel about Vosh and what, what happened with him and what he said? Yeah. Okay. Well, to summarize it, first and foremost, I'm not a Vosh viewer. So I don't know what his content would normally be. I don't know exactly all of the lore with him. I'm pretty new into understanding Vosh as an entity. I knew he had a thing with the the Trinity, you know, him and Hassan and Destiny. But I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know the falling out. I'm not really sure on all the details. So when I started to consume the thing between him and Ethan, my job was just to be sort of like, what is this person? What category are they in? And are they ill-intented or not? So the folder leaking wasn't really phased by that. I did see the leak to confirm how I felt about the photos in the folder. My concern was more like when we call people things, are we being accurate or hyperbolic? Stop. Sorry, not you. Wow, oh, Alexa coming in hot. Are we good? Good call. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Go ahead. So there's a lot of things that I covered, but basically I'm pretty sure Vosh is a degenerate that is struggling with multitude of issues that are now to a lot of normie bubbles looking either worse than they are or to his bubble, not as bad as they seem. I can't tell if his bubble is giving him too much good faith and Ethan's giving him too much bad faith, but those leaks between what Destiny covered today, I covered old Destiny covering the original falling out between Poppy and Vosh, pretty degenerate. Pretty, pretty bad, at, honestly. Mm -hmm. Worse than the folder, I would argue, because the folder involved no real humans. Uh, yeah. yeah. So sure. the way he treated real humans, pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, uh, honestly, <laughs> not that I'm a therapist, but I would recommend therapy with a focus on autism <laughs> and a specialist in degeneracy. Okay. <laughs> I think that's where I am with Vosh. He just seems like an incredible liar but i'm not sure why he's lying yeah it's it's that's what like it's possible that he just didn't know this stuff was lolly but it's really hard to believe mm. especially in his space because he knows like all about anime all about lolly he yeah. knows about that shit like i could totally understand like people in my audience don't really know we have to like we had to figure out what Lolly was when we first heard about this oh, and like try to like understand and like, uh, yeah. And so it, it's, um, I, for him that that's not the case. He's not that person. So yeah. it's, it's a lot harder to believe for him that he just happened to end up with this stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think I'm in the same place. Like I, I, I the stuff that was on his computer, super gross. Um, he the stuff that happened with Poppy and them. He still to this day, I think, like maintains like, well, Poppy's a piece of shit, so I'll yeah. never, uh, like uh, apologize to her. But uh, what I did wasn't great. Just fuck her, anyways. And yeah, um, I to some extent maybe I can understand that. I don't know, but um, but yeah, the I I do think that Ethan was a bit too bad faith. And mm -hmm. I do think that Vasha's friends were too charitable. And 
uh, yeah, I think that we probably have the same takes across the board. Um, although I don't, and I, I had to make this distinction with other people as well, but I, I don't, I don't see evidence that he's like actually a, uh, like a pedophile mm. or anything. Mm -hmm. it, I do. It does make sense to me to some extent where he's talking about like proportions and shit that maybe that's the thing that he's attracted to. Um, it doesn't sound like he's some sort of like child predator or anything. There's no sure. evidence of that, but the, uh, but yeah, the type of stuff that he's into is, uh, it seems a bit fucked up. Yeah. I think I, in my look, like, I allow people to misspeak all the time. I misspeak all the time. I'm oh, I'm always okay with misspeaking. But if we're going to be very, very clear and precise, I wouldn't say that he, there's any evidence for him being a PDF file. But I would say that there's evidence for him liking power dynamics, with him liking mm -hmm. vulnerable people, with him seeking a desire to put ba like push boundaries. I would say that he's into a lot of like C and C o oriented things. Even the old leaks with Poppy DMs, he's very into like. She, she would ask him like three, four times, like, I don't want this. And that he would sort of like push and push and push, but in like a very, mm -hmm. like a specific way. And so I think that I couldn't say without a very a smug mm -hmm. and like uh, a very like smug and arrogant way. Like, oh my like gosh. I know you want this sort of thing. Oh, yeah. he read it. I swear he read that in some porno and he's like, yeah, she's going to like this, bro. <laughs> and I was like, slow down yep. there, uh, tiger. He kept saying to well, he called into Destiny. This is the old Destiny. He called into Destiny. He's like, Steven, I know I'm charismatic. I was like, slow down there, buddy. <laughs> He's like, so like, I know I'm handsome. I know I'm smart. I know. <laughs> Which I yep. guess if his personality wasn't so deplorable, he would be. But like, also, no. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, go ahead. I I know. I was. I was. Oh. I was going to let you finish. Yeah, I would say that um, I think I, I want to be really precise with it because a PDF file is a very specific accusation. But also what really blew the audience's mind, and again, this is my work, so I understand if people don't like vibe with this, but a lot of the crimes against children aren't done by PDF files or done by child predators or people who are looking for vulnerable mm -hmm. people. So again, like if we're going to be very accurate in protecting children and keep in mind, no child was harmed in this conversation between Vosh and his computer, you know, then we really should be talking about why people target vulnerable people, whether adults or children in general. And I think that that's not a conversation people wanted to have, especially age three, which to be fair, I understand from their perspective, their parents, they're definitely concerned. But honestly, if you're concerned about your kids, you should be paying attention to their teachers and their preachers. Probably not some degenerate sure. on Twitch. Yeah, they uh, in in like a lot of the stuff that H three was saying about Vosh just was like bad faith. Like they mm. really were like taking old quotes out of context, and over and over, people were saying like, "Oh no, you're taking those things out of context." And they're like, "No, we played the context." And it's Ugh. like, okay, well that's even worse, dude. You guys did play the context, and you still came to the wrong conclusion. So. <laughs> You still said that he was like defending pedophilia or defending child porn. And mm. that's just not what he was doing in any of those clips. But, um, okay. So, so when you say mm -hmm. when we want to help men, mm -hmm. do we mean Vosh? What, what do you mean by that? Because normally when I hear people say like, we want to help men or something like that, we're talking about like young men who have trouble dating or, uh, men who have like too much stress and are committing suicide or something mm -hmm. like that. So what what is it that you like mean or you think people mean when they say that they want to help them? I was on a panel the other day, which I know you reviewed with Rashad and Wick and everybody. And we were talking about like men and women ideologically moving in different directions. And the other day, wasn't that like... Oh, okay. Three it was like weeks, a few weeks ago. Everybody relax. Everything ago. is a day to me. Okay. What is time? <laughs> I have time blindness. What is time? Okay. You know? Okay. okay. So... And um, I know when you reviewed it, you were like, why does Brittany always go individual? Why does she always do this? And I was like, I really struggle when people are like, we need to help men. I'm like, which ones? Because like Vosh? Because like he's a whole group. Or do you mean the incels? Or do you mean this kind of man? Or like, which kind of man are we helping? Because like, even if you said, I'm going to help the average man, like there's no one individual man that is that average. And so there's a group of somebody out there, but I just don't know who it is. And I look at Vosh's and I look at the incels who often in these documentaries are autistic. And I look at these people who are struggling and I'm wondering like, if we want to help them, don't we first have to recognize like why they're actually suffering and not just because they don't have six pack, six pack abs. Like this cannot be the reason they're suffering. 
right? So what you say, like, or people say, I want to help men. I'm looking at Vosh like this one, right? Because he's a mess. Everyone else is doing kind of fine. Or no, is it not the Voshes? It's somebody else. Um. So first, like the individuality aspect of it is like, a lot of that has to do with um, like it, a lot of that's going to have more to do with like policy and like government regulations and mm. things like that. So like the and, and some social changes. So like um, feminism was like trying to make it to where women had the right to vote. They were able to own property. They can um, they can like work high position jobs and mm. be respected in the same way, have like the same respect in a household and um you know things like that where they're they're gonna have like the same positions as men it, i think when people say we should help men i think they're kind of saying the same thing is that like men are allowed to be emotional men are allowed to be like the the caretaker they can be the ones who stay home and and take care of the kids men can be nurses men can be teachers men can like and they want to say like you know say all the things that women can do all the things that women are doing more often all the things that we consider to be feminine now men can do that shit too mm -hmm. what allow men to be uh like uh just as broad and just as uh varied as females are because like right now women have like a very wide range of things that they can do mm -hmm. but they're still feminine mm -hmm. while they're doing it whereas men have like they're masculine that's it you can't it's way worse for a man to do something feminine than it is for a woman to do something masculine mm -hmm. and so like lots of times when we're talking about uh helping men we are talking about yes like allowing men the ability to do more things and have a wider range of uh of uh masculinity uh, of shit that's like available to them through masculinity does that make Gosh, sense yeah yeah i know it makes total sense it's so weird now hearing that because of course when i was like in my activism days and i was working with organizations obviously the feminist groups pulled off into subcategories because it couldn't fit everyone's needs and so we had to make a lot of groups to feed different kind of women's needs but weirdly enough there was an activist group of feminists that were focused on these particular needs for men but the men we're not interested in it. And now to hear them say they're interested in it is beautiful. I think that was ultimately the goal, but it is kind of funny. Like now I often, um, yeah, I often struggle with this sort of like sh how communities know it, we're going to need it, but then the communities don't realize it. And then by the time they do, I feel like sometimes these men groups blame women, but women were already advocating for this for men, but they weren't being heard at the time. And now it's not, like one-to-one -one here like not all feminist groups are advocating for men but there was a subcategory of group i was involved with in seattle that tried really hard to involve men in the activities um but it is hard to focus on men men's needs through feminist groups so obviously they need their own groups just to focus in on it but then i wonder like who is this man i guess that needs this help in the first place right just like with women because Everyone's perspective is that women have everything they need and men have everything they need. So who are the people who don't have something they need? You know, because you know how you know what I'm saying. Does that make sense? Um. Okay. So. The okay. So like the the idea that like um, men who go out and uh, if there's a if there's women there, the guys just kind of expected to pay for it, right? Uh. uh like you could want to like take your wife out and she says, oh, well, I want to invite my friends. And so all her girlfriends come and now you got like five women there. But because you're the one guy, you're expected to pay for all of this. This is something that like we think of as like puts a lot more pressure on men. And there's just these expectations of men to always be taking care of women in this sort of way. And then there's tons of things like that. Not that's a very small thing, a very small example, but there's tons of stuff where we think there's too much expectations on men and then men end up committing suicide at much higher rates than mm -hmm. uh, women do. And so there's like a, a compounding amount of problems where like they're expected to be the breadwinner. They're expected to, um, to like be physical and, and, you know, be uh, protectors and um, there's like, yeah, a, a ton of problems, but then on top of that, like, yeah, they don't really, 
uh, talk about their feelings. And sure. if they do talk about their feelings, it's considered a feminine thing. And so then they just commit suicide at higher rates. And so you want to like normalize a bunch of different sorts of traits for men yeah. so that they're, they feel more uh, vulnerable and capable of talking to people around them and then are probably committing suicide at uh, lower rates or mm -hmm that they're having less uh, emotional problems in their lives or they feel more comfortable going to therapy. Um, they feel more comfortable, like, yeah, getting the help that they need while they're alive. And, um, and this isn't just to keep them from committing suicide, but just, you know, whatever wide range of issues yeah. that could come from um, all of these compounding problems. Uh, and so, yes, like, a, like when we're talking about like, you know, some policies that we would want to like implement and things like that, that's one thing. But then there's also like the social aspect of, of just being, uh, more open to men having more, um, broad rays of emotions and feelings and talking about these things without it being a negative from them. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like it's, we're not, we're not looking at one guy and saying, Hey, this is the one guy who needs this thing. It's like, uh, all guys just need more things available to them. All sure. guys need to be uh, feel capable of doing these things more generally. And we, we have to make it to where women are not going to like shame a guy or say like, oh, well, I'm not dating you anymore. Or I'm, you know, it, you're, a, you're a piece of shit if you didn't, um, if you didn't uh, like pay for the meal or, you know, you're, you're like, you're not a real man if you're not like paying for all of my shit, like that sort of stuff that we're trying to like, yeah, we're trying to change the expectations. Yeah, I think I, you know, for the first time I saw a TikTok about that. A guy was at a party or something and his wife's friends thought he would pay for people. And I've never heard of that my whole life. That's not something, everyone in my life is very independent. Women work, men work, you pay your own way. Like nobody's supposed to pay for anything. Like sometimes on a date, the person who asked out would pay or maybe the man would pay if you're religious, but like it's just whoever, whoever pays, pays. And so I thought that was such a like, oh, interesting. Like I never, who, who does this? Like who's practicing this way of dating? Like who expects their man to pay for everybody? Like their friends? I never heard about that. But okay. I was like, okay, that's a thing. So because the United States is so diverse, we're not going to agree on like, should all men open doors for women? So is it okay that some places do that and some places don't? And then do we understand that like this idea that will change the dating expectation means that no one's going to be happy, right? Because not everyone universally wants what we want. Mm -hmm. So then how do you like cater to the individual groups or categories of like communities that need different things? Like religious communities need different things than secular communities. So when we again want to talk about helping men, are we expecting these smaller communities to focus on the men in their community? You're you're just hoping that you make enough change to where there's uh, there's enough acceptance for these people to find somebody that like uh, that's just going to be healthier for them. Okay. Like women yeah, who wanted to be, um, you know, the boss bitch and be more like have some more masculine traits and mm -hmm. be in charge and all of that shit. They could do that one way or the other, but they wouldn't do that because it was socially shamed. It was something that was looked down upon. It was something that made, you know, they know, oh, well, if I go do this, it's going to be harder for me to find a guy who's actually going to want to be with me. Mm. I have to be more docile and quiet and, um, and more feminine so that I can actually find somebody who's going to want to marry me. And so it's the same here where like, as social change happens, men are capable of being these people and hopefully finding a partner at the same time. Okay. I want to ask you a question I've been asking people and whatever your mm -hmm. answer is good. When you think about dating, are you dating to compete with other people? Or are you dating to find like your soulmate, whatever that means to you, like that very special person that you're like, Oh my God, like I feel like, this is my human, whatever you call that. I, so we've talked about this before. I, I don't, I don't think that I could put it into like a dichotomy like that. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I've recognized over time that there are definitely like things about myself that are competitive. So like there, we talked about one time that like, there are girls sometimes that like, I know are into me and they like me, but I'm just not really into them. Mm -hmm. But then I know a ton of other guys are into them. 
And all of a sudden, they become way more attractive to me. Sure. And all of a sudden, and I think that is a competitive nature. I think that that's what that is, is that like just knowing that these other guys would be like, shit, Tom got that. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck, like that all of a sudden makes me more attracted to them. I don't know if that's what it is, but I think it is. And normally if that happens, like I try to like catch myself on it, but not all the time. I don't always. And and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't even give a fuck. Like I think she's hot now. And so I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. totally into this. <laughs> like, um, yeah. And so, yeah, so there's there's that aspect of, like, competition um, yeah. with people. And there's always competition in, like, just the the way that, like, yes, I, I like that other people are attracted to the women that I'm dating. Or I like that other guys hit on my girlfriend. Or I like that they're looking at her or stuff like that. Like, there's always that aspect. But that's just an aspect to it. Obviously, mm -hmm. I still want to get along with them. I still want to have chemistry with them. I still want to, um, you know, to, uh, we still have to have some shared, um, interests in order to, to do things together and to enjoy each other's company. And so it's not one or the other. I could never put it into a dichotomy, but I do think like competition is generally going to be part of what it is that we're doing in relationships. Okay. Do you think, I'm trying to ask it in like a maybe slightly different way, but do you think when you're dating a woman you're looking for someone you get well enough on with to form a life with, or are you looking for a very specific kind of person? I'm looking for somebody to get along with. I'm, I'm looking okay. for somebody that I have chemistry with. I'm looking for somebody that I'm going to enjoy their company. They're going to enjoy mine. Mm. We're going to have fun together. We're it, it, the, the, I think the harder part of relationships is once you like get through the honeymoon phase and then you get into this like, regular phase where you just have to tolerate each other you just have to be around each other all the time and not hate each other and mm -hmm. um and it doesn't have to still be this thing where you like need each other 24 7 and like always touching each other and all of this that's the harder part and it's definitely the harder part to get used to but if you get into that and you still enjoy each other's company and you still want to be around each other and you still want to go forward spending your lives together then um, I think that's like the, the thing that really like makes a relationship work is that you enjoy each other's company long-term. Mm. You don't have to share this obviously, cause it's so personal, but are your, your parents are still together, right? Mm -hmm. Are they like, uh, would you say like, like they're super, super duper in love or they have like a really nice companionship that they've made work? I think that they have a, a nice companionship that they've made work. I think that they, um, I think they probably some aspects probably stayed together because they had five kids and That's wanted to, family. uh, some aspects. They also, my dad was a pastor and mm, if mm -hmm. he got divorced, that would be like a huge mark on his record that like, he's, uh, he's not the family man that churches want to be a pastor. Um, I think, uh, I think they, they've had like their share of issues and problems to where, they've uh you know they it's not um it's not what it was when they were younger but it's i i think that yeah they they've found something that works and they they still hang out all the time and enjoy each other's company and are able to tolerate each other that makes sense okay now weird yeah. question on sort of related to vosh i was curious about the line of degeneracy because you said your community didn't even really know what lolly was which is fair i don't think that most people know what Lolly is. Like I even made the argument that Fifty Shades mm -hmm. of Grey are pro is probably long term worse for society than Lolly, only because like Lolly isn't consumed by a lot of people in America. It's a very Japanese thing. They are having their own issue with it, but like here, it's not. You have to really go looking for something adjacent, right? It's it's very weird. Um, but at the same time, like your community, I wonder, do you guys have something like adjacent to that that would be like very strange to normies in a way like you know how every normie culture has like a thing that's like weird like obviously in even my bubbles like lolly's probably like the weird thing like mm, that's a little shady little mm. like we're open to the discussion but you know what i mean what would be like your thing I don't know. I, when, when we're talking about Lolly, it's hard to think of yeah. something that is that like, because probably the most stigmatized thing 
in the world is like pedophilia yeah. and children and yeah. those sorts of things. And so, yeah, I can't imagine something that I could put in the same box as... What about uh, CGI's troll porn? Um, I, we don't... So yeah, we don't really even like talk about that over here because no. we do talk a lot about like porn. We talk a lot about like what it is we're attracted to. Right. Um, that's something that like a lot of people were pulling up is like us like actually pulling up specific women to talk about specific aspects that men are tr attracted to and mm -hmm. um and like what it is that like makes us attracted to those things and um and so yeah, we're like we do talk a lot about those sorts of aspects and sexual uh, dynamics and things like that but not we yeah we never really talk about like troll porn or anything like that and through this we did talk a little bit about the idea that like lots of times when you are looking at porn sometimes you'll just end up with like a ton of uh, like alien women with yeah. with five breasts and a massive tail and like uh, a, a third head coming out of their hip and yeah. shit like that. You're like, what the fuck? Who yeah. watches this? Like, how can you even like, how can you even get into this? It mm -hmm. just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And so, yeah, I like those things for me and it's seemingly for most of the people in my community are just so far outside the bounds that we mm. have trouble understanding them. That's so interesting to me. I was, I was kind of befuddled at sort of uh I had somebody in the comment section that was like, if you like tentacle hentai, you're into literal tentacles. I was like, okay, first of all, not even close, bro. But then I have a lot of girls in my audience. So the girls in my audience, like we've been reading like vampire werewolf smut for like our whole life. Like we've been reading like, like girl novels be graphic and very mm -hmm. questionable sometimes. And they're all New York Times bestsellers, by the way. I was telling my husband mm -hmm. about a story I remember reading when I was younger about like, like like Viking kind of setting and like the girl had to be his slave and like, well, he had a fever and he didn't know what he was doing. He like basically has sex with her. And then it's like this big, like, room, like she's into it and he's into it. But then the next day he doesn't remember it. And so I'm like, I don't know what just happened here, but I, this is questionable. But like in the story, I remember reading it when I was younger thinking like, oh yeah, this is just like a normal book you got at the Barnes and Noble or like the library. And then looking back now, I'm like, oh yeah, it's just kind of like porn, but also like, CNC, like consent, not consent, but it's like in our normal New York Times bestsellers or like Laurel K. Hamilton's one of my favorites. And she's like a New York Times bestseller, very popular. People interview her at book conve conventions and stuff. And uh, she basically writes like kind of like werewolf vampire smut, but also there's mystery involved. But it's like, you know, Marvel actually worked with her and she has a comic book series with them. Like, so she's very mm -hmm. like, normal but not normal and so i kind of wonder when we're having these conversations with normies like i don't know if the if they notice like oh did you know like wonder woman was made by a bdsm polyamorist who like had a bdsm element to her whip and like the american association for protecting children like made wonder woman like inaccessible to people because they thought it was corrupting children so like even wonder woman at one point in american history was considered bad for kids why wait Be because she was sexual like, yeah because of her whip was, like... and like her clothes and like the way she would like lasso people wow. so like again when we talk about like what is taboo i think it's kind of interesting now some things are kind of like mm, obvious we don't want to harm any real people i actually stopped watching real people porn a long time ago because i all these like non-consensual stories kept coming out and then i got really nervous about if i'm watching something unconsensual so i just switched to like hentai and hentai is like really strange oh, okay. as, you, as you know, but like I watch a lot of hentai, but even then it's been a while since I've even bothered to watch anything. Girls have our imaginations, but I always wonder mm -hmm. when we're having these conversations, like are people, I can't tell if people are really not engaging with these things or if they're saying they're not engaging with them or if they're aware that other people are doing it and the world is still functional. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, okay, so there's there's tons of things that, like, are really popular when you look at Pornhub and, like, mm. the most popular types of things are, are it when you're looking at some sort of, like, fetish or something that's gonna add, a, like, a different element to it. It's normally shit like, like, step 
right. brother, stepsister, stepfather, like stuff right. like that, where it adds a bit of taboo. It makes it feel a little bit wrong, but doesn't mean you're actually like into your stepbrother or For into sure. your like family members or anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And obviously like women you mentioned have their own things. There's tons of, uh, it seems to be really common that women have uh, attractions to like rape fantasies mm -hmm. and being dominated and some like dark mysterious guy where they don't even know who he is right. and they're having sex with him and that sort of stuff. Like those things are, are fairly common, but when it comes to, uh, and I think cartoons are probably becoming more and more popular. The, the, like I've tried watching cartoons. My problem with them is that it's the same animation over oh. and over and over and over and over and over. And sure. it's like, it's like a half a second animation. So yeah. it's not like a two minute animation that's over and over. It's like, yes, it's like a, a one second animation <laughs> that's just on the loop repeat sure. for like, two three minutes and yeah. then they switch to a new loop for three and it's like okay this isn't this just isn't realistic at all it's not uh um, yeah. i can't watch this but i think that like the more that um uh, like ai stuff gets better the more that uh uh graphics are getting better the more that that'll probably become uh a norm and more and more popular mm -hmm. but i do think that most people are looking for stuff that's a bit more realistic and has more variety to it than that so there's obviously a, a ton of people with a ton of like fetish type stuff that they'll watch like somebody getting stuck in a dryer or um you know milf porn that sort sure. of shit and anytime you look at the top 10 lists those sorts of things are always there yeah. but they're not even like always telling you that it's just a a uh, fetish for like uh, a stepbrother or stepsister or something sure. like that. But it's normally also telling you like young women, like if it's steps, stepdaughter or stepsister, it's like 18 years old and yeah, they're like course. dressed like a, like a cheerleader. They or even have to put step. Like so it coincides with the law because they don't want to do incest mm -hmm. stuff. So they actually have to put step, even though it's obvious, like <clears throat> it's all about dynamics. I feel like people are interested in power dynamics in the feeling, the taboo, the, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, the, I think people are interested in like the imagery. Like I remember I went through a large stage where I just watched lesbian porn and I wanted nothing else, but I only watched lesbian porn. That was like very specific. Or I always watched porn with that. Like I was going for like a vibe. I was like, what vibe do I want? And I'm, I'm the kind of person that doesn't watch the whole video. You know, I just kind of skip to like the good parts. You know what I mean? So okay. everyone has like a different vibe. Even with hentai, I'm like, what vibe am I looking for? And then I go to look for that vibe. I, mean, I don't care what the fucking characters are doing. I don't care what the storyline is. I don't care who's who. I'm just looking for a vibe. And I think that the vibe is really hard to explain to people that are not thinking about it that way. And I, and I wonder if that coincides with certain types of people. Like I wonder if D and Deers watch more vibey porn or I wonder if people who are into role play or LARPing or BDSM, like do they watch more like vibey porn versus like more normative porn? Are they like, are they less concerned with like the imagery? You know, I always wonder about you that watch as well. The, did you watch the, mo or did you play the most recent uh, Grand Theft Auto? No. I don't, mm -mm. Okay. There's a. There's a guy, I forget his name. I'm blanking on his name. I'm sure chat knows it, but there's a, there's a guy who is like, a he lives in a trailer and he's this kind of like a greasy dude. And he, but he says at one point, like, um, they're like, you know, we have to go find this thing. Where is it? And he says, I don't know. It's like porn. We'll, we'll know it when we see it or something like that. Like, we'll, oh. we'll just have to keep looking until we, until we know what, yeah, Trevor. And that I think that's what it is for most people is they don't know what they're looking for when they first get on and they're yeah. scrolling through a bunch of different porn things and they'll search different keywords or different like actresses and shit. And they're just going to keep going through and then trying to find whatever it is. They don't know what they're in the mood for. But once they see it, they're like, OK, that's the thing that, yeah. I'm, that yeah. I'm looking for right now. And I think that that's how most people engage with porn and what it is that they're uh, that they're doing when they're when they're searching. Okay, how about this? I remember in my early, early 20s, I was talking to a guy who was working at a grocery store, and we were talking about porn on our computers. And I was like, he's like, oh, I always erase my history. I was like, I never even think about that. You erase your computer history? He's like, yeah. And I was like, why? He's like, well, what if somebody like sees that I've looked at porn? I was like, 
so and he was like what do you mean i was like Mm -hmm. what do you mean i was like are people really out here i don't even remember the last time i raced my history to this day i don't remember to do that i never think about it Mm -hmm. and then i was thinking about the idea of like vosh having a folder on his computer now i never have well i have a folder of pretty art because i want to mimic it for of or something but like i don't really have a porn folder because like that isn't i'm not gonna rewatch most stuff right but i would say that that always seemed funny to me like somebody would erase their history and i wondered like you know, everyone thought it was weird that Vosh had the folder on his computer. But I mean, I've dated really neurodivergent people. I don't know why they have folders on their computers. Like, I think they collect them. Like, I had, a, I dated a guy who was like 12 years older than me. He had a collection of porn. I have friends who are neurodivergent. They have collections of porn, like alphabetized, like categorized, like number. Like, they have it by genre. This guy had so many unique videos of porn saved. And I would just go through them. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, zombie porn we are just like the weirdest shit and you never think about it and i'm like what is this obsession like some people just get yeah like- but that isn't that i think that's part of it is like you just going through it and looking at it and being like this is weird like that's the part that people don't want they don't want somebody looking at what they're looking at and being like why is this person so weird why are they well, not weird in a bad way like, just like weird that you'd save it but i think it's kind of i mean i thought it was cool i didn't judge him obviously i mean i'm pro porn i'm a sex worker so, like, I don't care if people have porn. I just think, like, saving it is weird. Because, like, why would you? Oh, well, I guess you would watch it for the fan of it. Maybe he liked the thrill of, like, look at this weird video I found. Which I think is reasonable, right? But, like, that must be strange to some people. Because, like, some people just look at porn as, like, a, uh, what I'm, okay. What I'm trying to fucking explain to you is, like, some people have a different relationship with the porn. Is what I'm trying to say. I, don't I think, think people find bad. something that they like. I think that they know that like there's times where they're having like a really hard time finding something and they're searching for a very, very long period of time sure. and they don't want to search for a long period of time. Oh, good point. So eventually they're <clears throat> just saving the things that they like mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. Uh, and just going back to it over and over. Do you think it was weird that he had a folder on his computer? Your, your ex-boyfriend? No, Vosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah? I, I, especially, like, as a streamer, that's, like, something that I try to, like, avoid at all times is, like, never having pornographic stuff on my computer. Obviously, yeah. I fucked up on that recently, so that's uh, that's a thing that oh. I'm sure somebody's going to bring up. But Is that the stream we I, were on like, together? Because it disappeared. No, that was yes. something different. No? Yes, yes it was. Okay, it was it the was. Wix stream, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I noticed it was gone and I want to read your comments and I was like, man, <laughs> I love comments. And then I didn't see it up. Okay. Yeah. That happens. I have my own, honestly, I have my own OF photos saved in my download folder and I'm always like worried and I'm panicking, but I'm too lazy to organize it, bro. It just takes forever and I don't want to organize it. So I get it. I mean, I have shit on my computer too. That's definitely against TOS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? That's a, um, a little bit personal. You don't have to answer it, but it's also not even related to this conversation. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said something recently that I thought was interesting, and I just wondered your no judgment personal perspective on it. During the whole controversy you were having, and it felt a lot like personal stuff was going on the internet. So I, you know, but a specific YouTuber said that they asked you and they asked the lady in your life, like a question about you guys being intimate. And you both mm-hmm. decided not to tell her the truth. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, no judgment, why did you guys have to lie? And why couldn't you have said, like, none of your fucking business, ho? Why are you asking me? Because it's kind of inappropriate to Uh, be asked. The Yeah, so the first thing is, one, it's kind of like when they ask in the first place, it already feels like kind of uh, of, – it feels like an invasion of your privacy already, especially Mm -hmm. when specific people that you've spoken to, you've already said, like, I don't talk about this sort of stuff, and then they ask anyways. That already feels like a bit much, one. Two, if you answer, that's none of your business, Uh, it it Mm -hmm. sounds like the answer is yes, and I'm not telling you. Right. So you're, you are answering when you say that, like, at, that's what anybody will take it as is I'm not, I'm not answering that sort of thing. Yeah. So there was one time where I was talking to a specific person and I said, um, they, they said, do girls send you, uh, pics sometimes, or do you ever have like, um, 
like flirt with girls in DMs and stuff like that. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not talking to you about that. What, what are you doing? And then she starts asking about specific girls. And I'm like, again, I'm not answering that question. I'm not talking to you about this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't talk about this sort of stuff. And so I, in that case, yes, she asked things in a specific way to where I was able to say over and over, I'm not talking to you about this sort of thing. Yeah. But if the very first question is, hey, you and this specific person, are you guys dating? It would be like, I, I, if I say none of your business, then the answer is yes, obviously. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. for anybody else, I would have just said no, obviously, because yeah. it's like it's just the first reaction. Like, no, what are you yeah. talking about? But so so I have to just say no now. I just mm -hmm. like the, my only option if I want to keep it private, if I want to keep it secret, the only option is no. So that's one. Yeah. The the reason for wanting to keep it secret is like a ton of reasons. Obviously, sure. one, I don't want people in my personal business. Two, she doesn't want people in her business. Three, people you're dating a streamer, like people start treating you differently. It's gonna have like a different dynamic in chat where like yeah. people are gonna look at you differently and treat you differently. And um three, there's like or four, I guess there's I, I like um being able to like be a bit more open and like flirt with people on stream and and uh girls in chat and stuff like that and i think if they are like oh your girlfriend's here watching in chat this is mm -hmm. going to be more uncomfortable now that like creates like a weirder dynamic for people now and so yeah so like there's just a there's a ton of reasons why if i'm talking to a girl i don't want other people to know that i'm talking to her because yes it, it, like it just creates a ton of other problems and that's uh yeah. And and that's just in general. Like it's not just even with specific girls, but just in general. It's just a lot harder to to kind of come out with that sort of stuff and and tell people about your personal information because they love to use that sort of shit against you. They love yeah. to like find ways to use shit against you all the time. And so you're just giving them a new thing to like, oh, you don't like me? Go after this girl then. And you'll you'll have a an easier time getting under my skin or something right oh absolutely no i even um sometimes people are so sweet like in croatia they'll be like oh my gosh like i'm in croatia are you here and i was like okay <laughs> i can't keep i can't answer that in any way because if i start saying no you're eventually going to narrow it down and i don't like try to hide where i am but i just i don't try to volunteer it either and so it's one of those mm -hmm. things where like if you answer enough questions enough people might be innocently asking but also it's like, it's a little private or I've recently made some YouTube friends, which I'm just, I love it. And we're, so, we've been talking in private to kind of like build some sort of rapport together. And, um, I, when we negotiated our boundaries, I was like, I want to talk to you about work. I want to talk to you about anything. I talk about you on street. I don't want to talk about my family. I don't talk about my real life. I don't want to talk about my non-work life. Like, I just want to talk to you about stream. I meant, I'm happy to mention certain things about my relationship, but nothing more than I would share probably with stream. Um, cause no offense, mm -hmm. like this is first and foremost, a working relationship. And then, um, you know, I don't need, I'm not looking for people to trauma dump onto because like I already have friends and family and like all that stuff. And right. I mean, that's how I feel. It, a lot of people look at like friends that I have online and they're like, this is your friend. Like right. you should have treated them differently. And I'm like, I, it, it, they were my friend and I did talk Absolutely. to them a lot and we had like a connection, but but they were an online friend. They sure. still had tons of limits and boundaries to what it was that I was going to share with them about yeah. my personal life yeah. and tons of limits and boundaries about what they were going to share with me about their personal life. So I don't, uh, I feel like people look at these, uh, like these relationships online and they're like, that's your friend. And it's like, I don't know if you know the difference, but I, mm. I know the difference. Mm. I, and I, I can tell you there is a difference for sure. I mean, I'll take it a step further. Like I love my besties, but they're not obligated to tell me things they're not ready to tell me or if they don't want to share it with me. Like I love and respect mm -hmm. them. And if my friend, you know, if I ask them like, hey, are you dating this person? You don't have to tell. I really, I would probably preface it with like, you don't have to tell me because I know it's like private. Like dating someone is private. Like involving yourself with people is private. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think people maybe take it too casually or they want to know the tea or something. But I think even with my best friend of 20 something years, if she for some reason wanted to keep her love life a little private for a while and keep it just for her and her partner, I would respect that. But I think that's because mm -hmm. I respect that person's agency. And so I think I was shocked that people felt entitled to that information because I was like, yeah. you are no one is entitled to who you are in even maybe it's not even romantic like you're not entitled to people's personal relationship stuff 
Yes. I no, so I, I was shocked as well. Cause like, that's a thing in my like normal life as well is that, yes, yeah, sometimes I'll have friends who start dating each other yeah. and they don't want to tell people because right. they don't want the friend group to get weird. They don't want people right. to like, uh, like look at things differently and they just want their own privacy and they want to be able to learn about each other privately. They want to be able to like do their own thing for a while. And if everybody else starts finding out and starts putting their own expectations on things or starts asking them a ton of questions about it, it just starts to change the dynamic of what it was that they had initially. Yeah. And so once you like get into a groove and you like feel comfortable with one another, then maybe eventually you'll start telling people. But yeah, like it's pretty common that even yes, it, it outside of online relationships mm -hmm. that yes in my real friend groups they will just not tell people and lie about it and we would not be mad at them for lying about it because mm. like yeah you're choosing to keep that a secret you're choosing to keep that as part of your personal life and i compare this to like there were um there were a number of times where other people were finding streamers personal information and they were finding like their real names their addresses and shit and it started to get shared and those streamers would say, that's not my real name. That's not my, you guys got the wrong person. You guys are freaking mm. idiots. And then other people would come back and be like, we confirmed it. I can't believe they lied to us about this. And I'm like, they're supposed to lie about this shit. Literally. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? They're literally supposed to lie about yeah. this. Yeah. I don't know what your problem is. So then, yes. Yeah, so then in this case, when everybody's like, I can't believe you lied. We can't trust anything you say anymore. Like, this is shit that I'm supposed to lie about. Yeah. This is what I'm supposed to lie about. Like, I don't know what your yeah. problem is, but I've held this standard. This isn't a new thing for just me. Mm. This is a standard held for all of these other people when their personal information was coming out. I said the same thing. They're supposed to lie about this. Leave them the fuck alone. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard because in an ideal world, like even in my own world, I try really, really, really hard not to lie unless it's for survival. And obviously, like mm -hmm. location, personal name, doxing, like that's all survival to me. Like, don't fucking ask that shit, bro. Don't people don't put people in a position to ask that um you know and i think people innocently sometimes don't even think about the implication of like what they're asking like they think it's like funny or they're getting to know you or they don't they think like hey we're friends like tell me who you're dating and they don't think about like all the implications of that or you know maybe your partner doesn't want to be as active in the community anymore because like now it's weird mm -hmm. and people treat them differently absolutely fucking -lutely. And I think that that's something that, like, um, even with my partner, because he's offline, like, people are always like, well, if Brittany doesn't share her relationship online, like, she could be lying about everything. I would rather you think I'm lying than risk the privacy of my relationship for a partner who does not consent to being on the internet. Like, it's just the idea mm -hmm. that you think you're entitled to the details or to the person's imagery or to the, like, what were you doing? Here? It's like, you're not entitled. I wish people didn't have to lie. Like, I thought that that stood out to me. I was like, oh, both you and her decided not to tell the truth. But at the same time, it's like they shouldn't have asked in the first place because it's fucking. Right. I understand what they were thinking. They weren't probably not thinking of the implications of the question. You know yeah, what maybe. I mean? But here we are. And maybe. I do. Yeah, I, I know some people did. That's what I mean. Mm. So, yeah, I, some people I specifically know I've had those conversations Damn. with them to say, I am not talking to you about this. I yeah. don't talk to people about this. This is something that I will never reveal. And it's not just like a me thing. And this is like a, a thing that like a lot of people have trouble understanding as well is that like. This isn't like obviously for somebody who's not a streamer, yeah. none of their personal information is anybody's business. So like me, I am very open with my life. I do talk about a lot of my personal life and my experiences and things from my past and all of that shit. But other people that I talk to, they don't do that. Right. And so now you have this expectation that because I'm a streamer, now their personal life is supposed to be totally. uh, content now just because they're talking to me. That's that's insane. Totally. So, yeah, I like with a lot of these people, I know they know that I was not going to share that information with them. I know they know that I've said numerous times, I will not talk about this sort of stuff with you, yet they will ask anyways. And that's, uh, yeah, that just yeah. seems like a, an invasion of privacy. And that was like a problem that I had with specific people uh, too many times to where, like, yeah. I, I had to keep saying, like, you're you're getting into my personal life too much. This is not your business. You don't need to be, like, uh, concerned with this. Yeah. You know, this brings into mind that one time I asked Lav on stream, just, like, I didn't even think about it because I didn't think it was a yes, which was my mistake. When I asked her if she slept with Steven, I was just, like, I was making a funny, but it was, like, did you do it, Lav? Did you do it? And it was, like, a big – but then I realized, like, now in hindsight, I was, like, oh, fuck. I also put Lav in a situation to lie, which she did. 
you know, because apparently they had some intimacy. And then that became a whole thing because then Steven was like, Brittany, you don't know. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. And then I felt really dumb. And then I realized in hindsight, like, oh, I was like being so casual with it without thinking about the fact that maybe they don't want to talk about it. And so now I've put Lav in a situation mm -hmm. to have to lie about it. But then I don't like being lied to. So then I got annoyed and I still think that that's the problem with my brain is I really don't fucking like being lied to. But also... Mm -hmm. What could Lav have done in that situation? Because if she had said, like, I don't want to talk about it, you know what I mean? So, like, then it's, like, very confusing. Yeah. I hate fucking being lied to. I just hate it. Yeah, because if she says, I don't want to talk about it, everybody's going to take that yeah. as a yes. 100% yeah. of people will take that as a yes. Yeah. And so, yes, like, it, it, nobody likes being lied to. Nobody yeah. likes finding out that they were lied to. And nobody likes feeling like the person that they trust is being dishonest with sure. them. Nobody likes this. And so it's a, um, it, it's like, it's a complicated thing where it's like you as the asker, mm -hmm. you have to understand the, the bounds of what it is that you should or shouldn't be asking in the first place. Right. And if you choose to ask, you just kind of deserve to be lied to now. Like mm -hmm. if you're just kind of asking for it at this point. And mm -hmm. I don't think that for anybody, like any girl who I ever talked to on the internet, if they're uh intimate with me in any way i'm sure they have the expectation that i am not going to share that with people i will not tell people about it and that i would lie to protect them sure and if i didn't do this so, so many women would just not trust me anymore they would never message me they would never say anything to me and not just women but like friends in general would think sure. like well i can't tell you my personal information now because you think you have to be honest just because somebody asked like and, and so yeah so if somebody like gives me their real name or something like that or their phone number and somebody's mm -hmm. like hey i found this is this their real phone number i'm like i i yeah. cannot tell a lie I have to say, yes, that is their phone number. Like yeah, that is yeah, just yeah. such a weaselly thing to do. And, yeah. um, and it's bullshit. Like that's not like real honesty or anything because the honest thing is to make sure that the person who's giving you their intimate information and, yeah. and having an intimate relationship with you, that person who trusts you, that you don't let down their trust, that yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you do the right thing for them. And so for the person who I'm talking to, yes, with that person, I'm going to make sure they trust me. I'm mm. going to make sure they believe in me, that they know that I'm not going to share their intimate information. And for the person asking, fuck you, you shouldn't have asked. Yeah. That's your fault. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, I think, like, what I, I know it's hard to imagine, because, like I said, like, I'm happy to throw myself under the bus and say, like, fuck, even I did that to have on stream, but I think it's hard for people mm -hmm. to realize it until they are put in a, like, I remember one time I had a, um, a caller that was really, really great, like, really great person, but they were trying to bond with me in, in like, a jokey way, and they, I didn't share my location at the time, and they were, like, asking me what time zone I was in. I was like, you mean my real time zone? Because I usually I usually use Eastern and Pacific for work or CET because I'm Eastern in Europe now. Real, real time. Yeah, and they were like, I want to know your time zone, and I was like, Oh, you're doing that thing, huh? You're trying to like break the barrier of intimacy so like we can be closer. And they were like, Oh, and I was like, Now you've put me in a position of either lying to you or telling you to fuck off, right? And so we talked mm -hmm. about it, and it was one of those things where I was like, I know in normal society that's normal, but you're asking like a streamer. So it sounds like you're trying to right. get closer to me inappropriately before we've hit that barrier. And so like it was very interesting like having to explain that – but people don't do it maliciously. They do it because they right. want to be closer to you and they want to – you know. And so especially if you have a, a friendship that's already intact and then your friend asks you, it like – especially, oh my god, I've had it happen with my friends where – and this is the true testament to long-term friendship in my mind is like allowing your friends to be uncomfortable so they can tell you at their own pace is like, I always tell my friend, like, I will sit and wait for you, but when you're ready, I'm happy to hear it. Or if you never want to tell me, that's okay too. But it is hard to look at someone and be like, you don't trust me, but it's not about you. It's about them and their timeline. And they might not be ready to talk mm -hmm. to you about it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was just, yeah, the whole thing was a weird situation where I think, if you if you think I did the wrong thing there, that's sure. fine. I'm happy for you to leave and and be mad at me and whatever because I I think you have absolutely no understanding of social dynamics in this space. Sure. Um, but I got tons of messages 
from tons of girls just saying, hey, just wanted to let you know, I can't say this publicly because everybody will freak out if I say it, but I wanted to let you know, you did the right thing. No girl will ever trust you if you did or if you were mm. honest about these things, if you were tell putting their personal business out there, like every girl is watching what you're doing and appreciating it because mm. they don't want that sort of shit out on the internet anyways. And so like you did the right thing. And like, but I think for other people, they just look at it as like you lied to your friends. And right. to me, it's like, okay, well, my friends were pieces of shit for putting me in that position in the first place. Cause either I'm going to be dishonest to this girl and right. share her information, or I'm going to be dishonest to you and, and lie to you. I have, I have no good options here. I'm dishonest to one of these people in the, and I'm going to be dishonest to the person who's putting me in the position to do this in the first place. Mm. That's the person who's mm. going to have to lose out. Sorry. Yeah. Well, you know, even, even I think more than that, I just think about if you're in it, let's say you're in a very serious marriage and you're like, you know, so many, you're on a team, you're going to prioritize that team over everyone's expectations. I hope so at least. And so like if your partner, it comes down to protecting your partner or, you know, something like you got to protect your partner. And so that mm -hmm. idea, I don't think is as common in other people's circles, maybe. I mean, it definitely wasn't mine. My parents like you protect each other, you focus on each other first and foremost. But yeah, I do. I do think that that's an interesting perspective to think that he like, again, I don't like lying. But I also don't like being put in a position either. And so it's like, fuck, mm -hmm. like you, you know, like, if I have to make a decision, it's going to be to protect the people that are the priority ultimately like right. that has to be the decision so i obviously think you made the right decision in that that moment i'm surprised that it would have been a deal breaker for people or maybe people were really upset with you because honestly i'm um, part of me is like what did you think he was gonna do mm -hmm. like what else would he right. could what else could he have done what else could anyone have right. have done like and and again i don't like lying but i just don't know what else you thought was the better option other than to like, especially if you and her haven't talked about it or if you did discuss it and you decided we're not going to tell people. And then it's like, well, that's the, pri mm -hmm. that's the deal. That's the, that's what matters more than anything. Right. Yeah. It, and we did. And that is the thing that we came to is yes. Yeah. Like, and we talked about like, you know, uh, when would we talk about this? And the fact that, that when we do, we're going to have to say like, yes, we did kind of sure. keep this under wraps. And we did people, if they did ask, we did have to lie about this and stuff. And we like, we, yeah, we had to have kind of all those conversations. But for us, that was just like what was best at, at the time. And I don't... Uh, it's also it, there like, and I, I've mentioned this numerous times, but like with online relationships, there is just kind of this difference maker there where like you're not actually in person. It is yeah. like a just a completely different dynamic. And unless you're planning on meeting in person, it's just a totally different like thing altogether. It's a totally different beast. It's uh, it's something that is uh, like hard to even uh, categorize it, it as like a, a specific type of relationship or yeah. whatever, like yeah. long distance relationships or, you know, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, They're incredibly it's definitely hard. a different thing. They're different now. Okay. You don't have to answer this, of course, but correct me if I'm wrong, just for my audience's sake, if I'm not mistaken, you guys were put into kind of like two shitty situations, right? Like one, you were asked something very personal in which like the expectation is that you were they were owed something like an answer but two wasn't your relationship like leaked like somebody leaked it or did you come out with it first so, the stream that you were talking about somebody sent me a download um for windows media player so i pull up the windows media player and it i watched the video and then when i x out of it it just went straight to my library and there was a a video there that okay. should not have been there and so i just had to end stream and take it off but people already screenshot it sure. they started passing it around um and weirdly people started like going on streams and identifying the person saying oh i i know who this is blah 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 which is just insanely disgusting Insane. and then um Wait, is and this then, the, yeah, I'm sorry, then, how would this community feel about celebrity leaks? Like, you're going to go look for, like, that is such a weird thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you took someone's yep. private, like, leak of someone's private photo or video and then continue to spread it and then try to guess who it was? Yep. Yeah, Psycho. It, was, it was just, like, the, the way that people engage with this is some of, like, the what? grossest stuff that I've ever seen. And I'm truly blown away at, like, the lack of outrage towards 
all of the people who are trying to make sure that everybody could identify this photo. Like Psycho. that was just, uh, yes, it was insanely disgusting. And it feels weird because I'm the one person who can't really like have much of an opinion on this. And so I'm watching this thinking fucking shit. Like if I was the other person reviewing this, I would be the one person sitting there going, you guys are all disgusting fucks. Like Gross. what is wrong with you? Why would you, why would you think this is an okay thing to do? It's like, this is like a uh, borderline uh, bordering uh, like um, revenge porn. And Isn't shit. it? And Isn't it kind of revenge porn? Can you spread people's it, nudes around? It, it, I, so no, you can't. Yeah, definitely not. And, um, but yeah, just the condemnation for that sort of behavior was not there. Nobody cared. Nobody had anything mm. to say about it. Nobody cared to like keep identifying the person over and over on stream and keep like talking about who it was or talking about the, the like, yes, it was just, it was really weird. And um, the, the type of like, uh, I'm sorry, the, the amount the of consent violations, happened. like they, the consent violations are like a fivefold. Like, I can't, I can't even imagine. Mm -hmm. My community is, like, grossed out by this behavior. But my community is very, like, we try very hard to, like, I couldn't even, if somebody posted that on my Discord, like, they'd be banned. Like, you cannot do, that's not okay. Right. Like, don't even screenshot it from Tom's stream. Like, super gross. So, yeah, I don't even know how they justified it. I, I like again. They don't even have to justify it because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people out there who what? actually care or have any sort of condemnation of this sort of behavior. And so, so yeah, it weird. was just, uh, yeah. No, I don't like that at all. Yeah, I tried to keep up with all of it. I'm sure I missed some gaps in the story, but I just, I think I was so confused at what was happening because I was like, I don't know how degenerate this space has become, but like this is not an okay way to treat people, especially somebody mm -hmm. who didn't volunteer for it to happen in the first place. I think there was like um. Probably just like a, I don't know, like an ugliness to it that I just didn't appreciate, I think. Yep. Yeah. There's just like, I, I, I there's like this weird uh, thing that, um, I don't know. I, I, I guess there's just a lot that I found out about this space that has me really, uh, like, yeah. um, disenchanted with it and kind of really like looking at everybody, uh, very differently now. And yeah. Um, especially the types of relationships that I have online now, just like total, like, yes, I look at everybody completely differently at this point and have uh, very different opinions of streamers in general and the way that they engaged in these sort of topics. So yeah, I'm, uh, well, I, I, I feel like I'm going to be like <laughs> talking to people and engaging with people very differently going forward. Yeah. Like I, I know that for me, I've been on YouTube a long time. This isn't the first time I've realized people have different values, but I, I've, you know, I really like the space for the most part. I really like you. I really like Kyla. I really like a lot of people in the space. So I, you know, I hope to keep those bridges going, but even I'm like paying attention to how people react to certain things. And I'm like, okay, like, okay. Like I, yeah, this isn't, this is not how I want my community to react to certain things or spread certain things. And if you're willing to do it as like the streamer, that's not great, you know? Now, uh, mm -hmm. I did hear you say something on stream, though, to Andrew Wilson. Okay. <laughs> and I assume you're not talking about me when you say you might not talk to women ever again. Because I, I'm... Of course not. Okay. Course. Like, I heard that. I told my husband. I was like, he's not talking about me, though. He's not talking about me. <laughs> I wasn't actually saying that I wouldn't talk no, to No, you women. weren't. You he's, weren't. Like, he's being overly hyper hyperbolic because he even he talks to women and he, his wife goes on his show and he goes on whatever podcast all the time and talks to yeah. big groups of women so even he's just fucking around yeah. when he's saying like uh never engage with women never talk to women in the first place never do content with women like yeah. he's obviously joking that's what that's his fucking business right now is going on whatever podcast and talking to large groups of women yeah. but i am definitely like I, I, and I think I mentioned this after the conversation with him is that like, I look at the entire situation and what happened throughout all of that and just kept thinking, damn, dude, if the genders were switched, like everything would have been different. And mm. I can look at dozens of examples over and over where this sh sort of shit happens and nobody gives a fuck, but all of a sudden they give a fuck when mm. it's like 
uh, a woman who feels uncomfortable or something like that. And it's like, this is, this is weird. Like, this is super weird the way that you guys just like pick and choose. And when you, you will, will look at this and say, oh, well, it's different people with different values, but it's not like, it's not different values. The, mm -hmm. it, the problem is hypocrisy and inconsistency that they're like, uh, that they're going to pick and choose based on what is convenient or what is optically convenient. But when it comes down to like a, uh, actually holding a standard and actually being consistent with that standard that's when like you it's obvious that they just don't actually hold that standard they don't yeah. actually care um and that's the part that bothers me is that yeah like it just it seems blatantly obvious that uh none of these people actually cared about any of this shit it was just fun for them to like jump in and and uh I, try to get content out of I it. stand what I said. I stand by what I said on that wick panel. I think this is manufactured. I think people are bored and they want clicks and views and people are easy targets because they can spin it. I just think it's like not what I came to do on YouTube and thank God I don't have to because I make a living. But like it is one of those things where I think uh it's it feels also like really sad and ultimately like I don't know what kind of audiences get built from this. But yeah I um yeah, I'm I don't trust uh people who move the like goalpost a thousand times in a conversation. It makes me feel like this isn't <laughs> this doesn't it feels like a lie and I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's uh, everybody else seems to be perfectly okay with that. That I, yeah, just changing mm -hmm. what's what your problem is over and over, no. changing like literally directly contradicting yourself over and over and just like trying to find some way to stay mad like that everybody else seems perfectly fine with that and that's yeah. uh I don't know why they That's are. Weird. You know, can I say something? And I think this is going to sound harsh. A part of me is like, okay, you're either building that TMZ like energy into your content, which is like fine. That's you do you. Or mm -hmm. like you're never going to make anything of yourself. Cause I'm thinking like long term here. I'm thinking 15, 20 years. Like, where do I want to be as a content creator? And I certainly like, cause like we're young. Like, there, Jordan Peterson's in his 60s doing content you think we're gonna like i'm not gonna stop in my 60s like i'm gonna work yeah probably so not. Yeah. you want a good reputation you want a good connection with people you also don't want to like get off on these small stupid nothing stories and then build a reputation for being those people really so it is kind of strange that they decide to do that but sometimes i think it's because they don't think they have a career anyways so for them they don't care they're willing to throw it away well maybe yeah, so, like, for me, like, using, like, review content is generally just a way for me to have, like, other conversations and make yeah. some sort of original content. Yeah, Whereas for that. tons of people, they literally just don't make original content ever. Yeah, Their yeah, entire yeah. thing is just watching other people who are interesting and have interesting lives and interesting sure. perspectives and interesting stories and just watching them mm -hmm. and... uh and just using their content because they don't have their own life. They don't yeah. have their own experiences. They don't have their own shit going on to where they would ever be interesting enough for people to listen to. And so they'd rather just shit on people who actually do have that and who are uh, people with their own opinions and who have thought through things. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. Like the amount of people who just make an entire like channel just using other people's shit all the time. Yeah. all the time like yeah I, I i like like people will say this to me and i'm like yeah like fair enough but i like it, by far the majority of the videos that i'm posting are original content it's not of me like i'm not reproducing uh, uh reviewing other people's videos pretty uh consistently oh, no. No, most no, of no. my stuff is like debates interviews like panels uh, like it's my stuff it's it's yeah. very original yeah. content that well even I'm when you react you do pause forever i know because i listen to your streams and you will pause mm -hmm. and you will derail the conversation for 20 minutes because of a chatter and i'm like oh my god and yep. I'm <laughs> yep. so yeah you papa gut me like look listen if youtube takes away my ability to react to content i know i'm gonna be fine right like and huh? i think like that's right. kind of the point is like we all react to have better bigger conversations like gosh i ramble forever but that's the point it's like you're coming here to see tom's view of this i i love watch like i love watching you on vosh i like watching papa gut on vosh i'm just trying to get people's perspectives on the same story Right. I'm not here mm -hmm. for this. I'm here for your yeah. particular perspective. I want to know what Tom thinks. I want to know how Tom and I, if we align, if we're different. Oh, do I want to talk? Like, that's why I'm watching. And so, again, I think that that's the audience you want to build is an audience that wants to come hear your perspective so they can be like, oh, I want to know what so and so. I watched this content creator once, like review me for a second, which was fine. They didn't say nothing. I was like, oh, my God, we've been here for like nothing has happened. Like I've heard nothing, no mm -hmm. feedback, nothing. I was like, why am I watching myself talk? Like it was so interesting. That's what you, 
that's a yeah like i'll watch people review my content and they don't even have like a cam on screen mm -hmm. and when they do talk it's just something like oh wow right right. oh cringe right, oh right, right. man and like that's like the extent of the analysis that you yeah. get from them and it's just yeah i i like i see this all the time and it's kind yeah. of obnoxious which is like, fine i, I don't like, ever like you know yeah i don't i don't care i don't ever like yeah. say anything about it or or i would never do anything about sure. it like i i'm who cares pretty open with my content but yeah 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 it's uh yeah it's yeah. it's annoying yeah well i'm definitely here for like the long haul haul and i'm serious about being a content creator i have been for a few years now in a real way it's not just a hobby anymore <laughs> And um, I've mm -hmm. seen a difference in also the people that I've attracted to my content. And I appreciate you being one of them. And so uh, good on you for handling shit so well the last couple of weeks. Because honestly, it had me stressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty stressful. I mean, there were there were uh, like parts of like just the drama shit with like Kelly Jean and JCLK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that wasn't all that stressful. I didn't really care about that. But then like once like, yes, my personal life is now content and um and like i want to pick and choose what parts of my life i share with my audience and what parts i don't yeah. and when that is no longer my choice anymore and it's no longer in my hands yeah. um yeah that's that's like super stressful and annoying and um and yeah they're like people that i thought i trusted are like out there like putting out information about mm. me and sharing my dms and all sorts of shit like that and it's just uh there's i like i i've complete i already had a lot of boundaries on how i treat online relationships yeah and now instead i'm uh now instead i like i i've put way more boundaries up i've decided that there's way less that i will share with people that i think i'm close to behind the scenes like it, it'll probably be the same behind the scenes as it is on stream now for literally everybody i am not talking to you about shit ever yeah. again because yeah that's uh that's that's where i fucked up is just trusting somebody in the first place yeah yeah like ultimately i think that's probably the best choice and as much as i I'm so excited to meet new people in the space. Like, yeah, it's like peace and love. I don't know who anybody is, but I hope that ultimately we all have good intentions. And if you don't, I will suss you out. I think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm like, do you have good intentions or bad intentions? I can't tell. With you, I feel like you have good intentions and I hope I'm not wrong about that. And I think that's why I, I Wick, same thing. I think Wick has good intentions. I think a lot of people do, but man, you know, if you ever double cross me, Tom, if you ever oh, share all my deep, dark secrets, <laughs> you'll find out. All right. Well, that's all I had on my noggin today. Did you want to talk to me about anything? Anything on your mind? Um, shoot. You don't have to. There's nothing going on. Yeah, not really that I can think of. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, nothing that I can think of right now. Okay. Most of my mind is thinking, I got to go get some fucking nicotine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well you do that <laughs> enjoy yourself enjoy your stream um and i'll talk to you soon awesome thanks okay. Brittany. bye tom in my head in real life i'm in bed my belly's being fed and i'm okay i'm just fine yet all i do is whine not to you in my mind because i know i since I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.